That's addiction behavior. Once I'm going downhill, there's no stopping me. heavy keto aka ketovore a quick few seconds about why i eat this way i was able to get rid of my baby weight twice so i'm back to pre-baby weight and then some so i lost a little bit more than i expected i cleared up my chronic acne i recently found uh, a really bad photo of right after my first baby before I discovered keto, ketovore, my skin was really bad um, and I always had to cake it with makeup and I never liked to take pictures unless it was caked with makeup and or had a filter on it. So that's why I don't really have a lot of before photos. I was also able to get rid of my dandruff. It was, it could get pretty severe to the point of bleeding um, on my scalp and my iron deficiency anemia. I was, it was pretty bad, probably at the moderate level to the point where I was, I had already been warned about having to go get iron transfusions at the hospital. And then thankfully I found keto and then I didn't have to do that. So those are like the big major things, the major benefit that I have seen from eating this way, but I could go on and on and on about the small, tiny things that I see every day um, in terms of my health, my mood, my hormones, my periods, like everything. That's not this video though. Um, as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm gonna just talk to you guys about how the past few weeks have been. I have not been very good on my diet. I have not been faithful to ketovore i've definitely been indulging and not really on purpose so cheating is that what you would call it it's not a ton like it's not every single day but it's way more than just one day like out of the blue it's been like several days in a row that i've cheated and all the worst things too so let me let me tell you guys i really don't know how it started but i think it started with me overdoing it with dairy. You know how they say like dairy can be a gateway drug for some people, for some people. I definitely see me in that camp. I was doing it, overdoing it with dairy. I was starting to get acne again, my chin. And then like this area tends to be the biggest problem. Let me turn up the light a little bit. Okay, I think that lighting is much better. So I was talking about how I was starting to see, and I still see it, like it's still not gone. Constant reminder of the things I did wrong. So the things that I've cheated with have ranged from a dessert called flan. Um, it's got like sweetened condensed milk in it. And what I mean, that I've like cheated it's not even like a full piece of anything because that wouldn't that would mean that I'm intentionally doing it it's been very much unintentional which is probably worse because I'm like eating scraps of something like scraps of flan or scraps of a of a piece of cake like once I'm going downhill there's no stopping me and you know what that reminds me of like when you're eating scraps of something sweet like that, a junkie, a junkie settles for scraps. Like that's addiction behavior, you guys. It's 100% a sugar addiction and I'm not, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I mean, you can probably tell because I feel like every other vlog is just me talking about how, um, how I haven't like been the best on my diet, but I am not a moderator. Some people are so good at moderating, but you know what? I've realized that that's not 
the best thing either because even if you can moderate and I, I feel like that kind of gets you thinking like, oh, it's okay because I'm only eating a little bit, but that's dangerous as well because it's still doing damage slower, but still doing damage. And all the while you're thinking, well, I'm burning it off. It's only a little bit yet. You're still doing anyway. I don't know. I, I'm not saying like one is better. One is worse. If you're eating crap, like it's, it's not good for you. Right? So anyway, so it's ranged from like the mini size Snickers bars. Snickers are my freaking favorite Reese's. I know. And we started having like family events and I was, that's where I was having some of the cake and some of the candy that we would bring back home. We bring it home and then it's there and then it's in my mind. And then before I can throw it away, I have a piece. That's kind of how it goes down. Um, so flan, Snickers bars, Reese's, pieces of cake. And it's funny how everything just tastes so much sweeter when you're not used to it. Like, for example, this, you know, you guys saw that I added Equip protein to my coffee. I was influenced to buy that. <laughs> I swear I was influenced. Like once everybody starts buying it, I'm like, I have to. But only with something like this. Um, in my last vlog, I showed you guys how I was, now we're transitioning, like I'm veering off to a different, you know, conversation, but I cheated with lots of different things. And now I'm telling I I'm telling you guys how what I'm doing to kind of recoup. So the one thing I'm proud of though is that I have been consistent with my workouts. In my last vlog, I told you guys kind of what I was doing. I'm continuing to do the same thing, except I've gone down from every day to every other day. Every day was just too much. So much. So I'm doing that. Love it. Love the routine that I have going on. And I decided, that's why I decided to add some protein into my routine. So um, this is a salted caramel, half a scoop of protein. A full scoop is just a lot and it's very sweet. It's, it's very indulgent. And thankfully for the past few days, I've been adding this to my coffee and I haven't had trouble with sweets cravings. I've been doing well for the past few days. We'll see how long I can keep it up. So that's why I decided to add some protein. I usually resist uh, crazes like that, you know, like the Stanley cup craze because everyone has gone nuts over them. Just because of that, I refuse to get a Stanley. I will never have a Stanley. I think I saw a short or a reel or something where someone was like, they were literally like lunging at those things at target as soon as they opened up the display. And I was like, that's disgusting behavior. Like what is wrong with people? And I was like, never, never, even if I can buy it online and just wait for it for three weeks. Like I just associate that with like crazy now. So I will, I refuse. <laughs> um, and I'm usually like that. Like I'm good at resisting, you know, crazes and, and huge temptations like that. But this equip, I was, I was influenced and I talked myself into it because I was working out and then I saw, I'm just ranting at this point, but then I saw a short by some doctor, I can't remember, or a reel where they talked about how as women age, they need more protein because muscle starts to deteriorate and we need sufficient protein. And of course, a lot of uh, movement and exercise. Speaking of aging, I'm gonna be 30 next month. So boop. I'm happy because in looking back at, at pictures of where I was before, I remember how I used to feel in those photos. Yeah, just very self-conscious of how I looked, right? My face, my skin. It was really bad. You can tell here that I used to pick at my acne spots. And also my body, I was super, super self-conscious of my body. And what has changed more than the, the benefits of keto that I talked about a little while ago, more than that, I have gained control of how I eat and gained control of how I look because of it. I'm definitely more confident now, even when I veer off and, you know, get off keto or have crap, you know, even then I feel confident because I know what I need to do to get back to it. But when you do everything that everyone tells you, including your doctor, 
and you still feel and look like crap, then you have no control and you can't feel confident about that because you don't know what to do, right, to, to feel better. Now I know what to do. And so that makes a world of a difference. It seems like everybody has been struggling lately. I follow Courtney Luna and I follow um, Jennifer from Delighted to Meet You that just have been on the struggle bus lately with temptations and dairy. Dairy seems to be a huge thing like for everybody. Like just one of those things that is so easy to overconsume. And I guess it's not so bad for everybody, but for me, I really have to watch it. I mean, I'm still, it's been several days that I've been pretty good at my diet and still like I can see the effects of it. And this, I haven't had acne like this in years. I don't know what has to change. I can't like stop going to social gatherings. It just, I think it's just a mentality thing. Like I went to social gatherings when I was doing beef, butter, bacon and eggs, not as many, but it's definitely a mentality thing. So something has to change in my mentality to give me the strength and the willpower to um, just not eat that crap. Maybe it'll be enough to see these pimples not go away or the bloat that I get or the weight start to come back. You know, maybe that'll be enough for me to resist those temptations. And I also haven't really been good about preparing food before I go somewhere or eating before I go somewhere. So that's another another thing. So a lot of things have to change in order for me to get back to where I was. Close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes for a second. I won't change my mind. What does getting going to talk oh, something in my eye while I cut up my beef tongue because I have what is probably considered an unpopular opinion about beef tongue in my opinion it's definitely better than ribeye just in every in every sense it's more versatile it's juicier it's harder to overcook um, if you cook it the way that I made it, at least, I don't know. I guess there's other ways to cook it. So if you cook it the wrong way, then I guess it could be hard. But um, I showed you guys before I cooked it, the marbling. And this is what it does. Like it makes for some really juicy meat. Well, juices are dripping. So you cook it with the, um, with the skin and then you peel it off. After it's cooked, it peels off really easily. I don't know why I'm using this. I usually use it when it's hot. And it peels off pretty easily. And then I just dice it up or slice it and you can cook it in like a salsa verde or um, with some avocado, some guacamole. I usually add uh, lime and salt and then just, you know, we used to make talk. I used to make tacos with them, you know, with a tortilla. And now I don't. So that's my unpopular opinion. I think it's Beef tongue is the best. I grew up eating it and obviously I don't gain anything from anyone Eating beef tongue, but I think it's worth it because you know how when people say that chicken liver doesn't have an aftertaste But they're lying um, I'm really not lying when I say that this is a very mild flavor beef tongue has I don't want to say no flavor at all because what would be the point of that? There, it it does have a flavor. It's just very mild, like um, milder than than ground beef. Like if you've had the the grass fed ground beef from like a local butcher of yours, and you know you can taste the difference, right? You can taste that there's a little bit of an aftertaste in it because it's different than like store bought meat. Well, that it doesn't even have that. It's so, so mild. There's no other way to describe it other than mild. 
and yeah so if i can convince one person to try it out there then it's worth it so that's how i cook it it's very easy i'll show you guys how i serve it i'm just gonna chop it up and did i mention that i like that the fat is on the inside of the meat like it's intramuscular fat rather than around around it does have a few pieces of fat which i remove personally you don't have to but i remove it with the skin but the inside is full of like in inside it's marbled with a bunch of delicious fat and i love it i i feel like people just they're thrown off by the fact that it's a tongue so i totally get that but if you want to try it i highly highly recommend it mm -hmm.